Welcome to Organic Functional Groups Part 6. In this video tutorial, we will look at the relationship between intermolecular forces and relative boiling points. Let's get started. Okay, so let's remind ourselves what is this relationship? We know that the stronger the IMF results in a higher boiling point. And we've talked about that quite a bit in an earlier tutorial, so there's an opportunity to refresh by looking back. But we'll go off what we already know. So we know that H bonding is stronger than dipole-dipole, which is stronger than London, right? So with H bonding being the strongest IMF, we recognize that those solutions would have the higher boiling point. And when we're at London, that's the weaker IMF. And so those substances would have the lower boiling point. Okay, and then when we have a tie, what do we do? So it's easy to compare compounds that have different intermolecular forces, but what do we do if there's a tie? Remember that it's all about increased surface area increases the strength of the IMF, which increases the boiling point. So we know that there's two ways to increase the um, surface area. We could either do that with size or shape. So we looked at examples in the past, right? If we look at fluorine versus iodine, this is a gas and this is a solid. And the reason for that is because the iodine has the larger size. Okay, and then for shape, we looked at the example where we have two structural isomers, both C5H12, and we observed that the straight chain has more surface area than the branch, right? So more surface area. And so when we looked here, we see that this compound is a liquid at room temperature, and this compound is a gas at room temperature. So we have an, a very um, you know, physical example of intermolecular forces, and in that the higher boiling point creates a substance that's a liquid at room temperature. Here, the intermolecular forces are so weak that the substance stays as a gas. Alrighty, so let's see how you're doing with this concept. So arrange the following compounds in order of decreasing boiling point. And um, you can just go ahead and use the letters to make it simpler. And so the one of the main points here is to make sure we get the right order, especially if we're doing a multiple choice question. So decreasing means we start with highest boiling point, which of course means strongest IMF. And then we decrease down to the lowest boiling point, which of course has the weakest IMF. Okay, so if we look here, we scan these and we see that they all have the chemical formula C6H14. So they all have the same number of carbons. So we can recognize that compound B as the straight chain has the greatest amount of surface area. And so then we would look to compound D because it only has one branch. And then when we get to compound C, let's see, what did I do with, oh, these would be, yeah, these, these two are kind of tricky here. We have the two branches and the two branches here. So these would be very similar. So I would just say um, C approximately to A. So we can't tell these two. These two would be very close. We would be hard pressed. But definitely the longest chain will have the, lo the highest boiling point and as we increase the branching, we lower the boiling point. And then just to have a bit of a flashback to um, hydrocarbon structures, 
what is the relationship between compounds A and D? They all have the same chemical formula, however their bonding or their connections are different. So remember that's called a structural or constitutional isomers. Okay, now we will go ahead and practice a little bit more on the next page to reinforce your understanding before you get started on your homework. So if we look at this example here, um, which compound has the highest boiling point? So we look here and as soon as we see the alcohol group, we recognize that as an H bonder. And we look here and we go, oh wait, there's two H bonders. So that would, right, so we have a tie. So to break the tie, we look here and we see a five carbon chain. And we look here and we see a four carbon chain. Okay, so that covers the first two molecules. Now let's look at the other molecules to see what's going on there. So here we recognize this is not H bonding. We recognize this as an alcohol, or excuse me, an aldehyde. Right, so we have our four carbons with our aldehyde. There's our CHO. So with the aldehydes, right, we have hydrogen and we have oxygen, but they're not bonded together. So this is an example of dipole-dipole. Here we have another example of a carbonyl. This molecule is acetone. So once again, we have polarity, but it is not H bonding. So another example of dipole-dipole. And then in our last example, it's a pure hydrocarbon. So this would be London. Okay, so which compound has the highest boiling point? Right, it's gonna come down to the two H bonders. And compound A, the um, one pentanol, has the most surface area with the H bonding. So the correct answer to this question would be A. And then just to wrap this up, if we arrange the compounds in order of decreasing boiling point, high boiling point to low boiling point, then A is definitely has a higher boiling point than B. And then it would come to the dipole dipoles. And here, right, we have four carbons. And here we only have three carbons. So compound C would have a higher boiling point than D. And then, of course, last but not least, would come our nonpolar hydrocarbon. Okay, so that wraps up this tutorial on. Um, reinforcing our understanding of intermolecular forces and relative boiling points. Please take some time now to work a few homework problems to reinforce your understanding.